Hey everyone, it's Dr. Dickinson. In this video, I'm going to be showing you some strategies to analyze your assessment data for your week one assignment assessment analysis. Now in week one, we've shared with you some student assessment data for both third and fifth grade. You must select one grade level. You will read the student case studies that we've provided. There are 10 students. And then you'll look at either the assessment data for fifth grade or third grade. After you looked at your assessment data, the first thing you want to do is determine what are the California content standards that this assessment is covering. Once you've identified the standard, the next thing you want to do is identify the skills within that standard. Then you will look at your student profiles. For each student, you need to have at least three students in your assessment analysis that you discuss and share their results in the skills. One of the students must be an English language learner. Another student should be a student with social emotional learning needs. And your third student is going to be a student who has an IEP, is an identified as a student with a learning disability. All right, so now that we've gone over the little ins and outs of the assignment, let's take a look at my example here. Of course, it's not the example that you're going to be seeing in your assignment. We, I've looked at a different math standard and broke it apart. So the first math standard, the math standard that I selected was a sixth grade math standard, which is find a percent of a quantity as a rate per hundred. Solve problems involving finding the whole, given a part, and the percent. So based on this standard, I looked at some math um, assessments that include this standard. I identified three stand three skills within that standard that were typically assessed on an assessment involving percent and ratio. Skill number one is knowing that 100% equals one whole. Skill number two is finding the rate per 100, which would require you to divide the numerator by the denominator. And then skill number three is convert a percent to a decimal. So now that I've identified the skills within the content standard, then the next thing I did was look in at my assessment results and determine how many questions on my assessment result are, in, are cover each of these skills. So hypothetically, let's say my assessment for skill number one, there was a total of four questions. So the student got three questions out of four, which means they got 75%. Skill number two, is finding the rate per hundred. So on this specific skill, they got two out of four, which would be 50%. And then skill number three, they converted a percent to a decimal. They did that perfectly, four out of four, 100%. Then I looked at the overall proficiency of how the students scored in the standard based on all of the skills that I have identified. And they got nine questions out of 12 correct in this specific standard. So that means they would have 75% proficiency. So that's how you would unpack the standard, identify the skills, and then be able to give a really thoughtful analysis of how the student performed within this, within this specific standard. All right, so now that you've looked at the math proficiency, the skills, how you would dissect the standard, you want to think about the student's assets. So again, the assets are a student's interests, things that they're good at, their preferences for learning. So I provided an example here based on a sample student. Maria, who is an English language learner, and she participates in math class, which is great, right? We want our students to participate. She's not shy. She um, participates. She raises her hand to answer questions. She enjoys working with her peers and often takes the lead during group work. Okay, so that shows me that she's motivated to do the math. She enjoys working in mathematics. Um, she likes helping her peers. She's got some pretty good confidence there in math. She also um, draws pictures to help support her thinking, which is phenomenal. That's a great strategy that we want all of our students to do, especially students who are English language learners. And she benefits from guided practice. So I know that she's going to benefit from some direct explicit instruction during math time. Now let's look at her needs. Maria has a difficult time getting started with word problems. Okay, This tells me that there might be some issues with her um, reading comprehension, her ability to translate English into her primary language. She struggles with new vocabulary, another indicator that she's still a language learner. She still needs a lot of front loading with vocabulary. And this in turn results in having difficulty determining what steps she should take when problem solving. She asks for help, which is great, but she's not able to work independently. 
And again, this is all tying into her, her difficulty with reading and English language. All right, so this is a great way that you want to think about how you can analyze your data. I'll be sharing this document with you. Of course, you want to delete Maria. This is a sample student from another standard. You look at either third or fifth grade standards, your student profiles, and then start analyzing the data. Thanks so much. Be sure to watch our other videos on our YouTube channel for more information on ITL 516. Feel free to ask questions or give feedback in our comments to the video.